Hi, I'm Shoestring Jane. Welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things frugal, thrifty and money saving. So welcome really to my frugal week. I've, it's not actually a whole week, it's just a few days of my week. Last week I said how busy it had been and how I was trying to simplify things and keep it kind of less stressful really. It's still been busy-ish this week. But I do feel like I've got on top of things and one of the things that I really needed to get on top of was my diet so I will talk about that a bit more in my video but basically I am trying to improve my thyroid health so I'll talk about how I'm doing that in the video. Um, I was lucky really with what I got this week when I went shopping I didn't notice that there was any big gaps in the supermarket shelves when I went but yesterday the news said that there were likely to be certain food shortages they were talking particularly about crops that would be imported from hotter countries like Spain and Morocco so mainly kind of salad things and I didn't buy any salad things this week so perhaps that's why I didn't notice it but I also think that because I'm trying to eat a little bit more seasoning anyway, then I won't really notice that. And I think that's really what you need to do. But it has made us rethink. So this morning we've been talking about, you know, actually perhaps we should do a vegetable garden this year after all, if there are likely to be any kind of food shortages. I wouldn't panic. I, I never think it's worth panicking or panic buying because then you just create a problem. But it's worth thinking, well, if you've got a little bit of a patch of land where you could grow a few bits, particularly if it's going to be salad crops, um, you know, could get some of those in for the summer. It might be worth it. Some herbs, maybe some tomatoes on a patio. You know, if they're going to be short, fresh tomatoes. I'm quite happy to mostly eat tinned tomatoes anyway. So we've got quite good food stores. I have been trying to get a few things each week to go in the stores. So one thing I'm going to do... Um, you may have seen a few videos ago I tried out a dehydrator that somebody very kindly gave given me, Jane. Um, and I saw somebody on YouTube dehydrating frozen mixed vegetables, which I'd never really thought about. But actually my freezer is quite often rammed. So it might be an idea. And then you could use them in soups and stews and that kind of thing. So next time I go shopping, I'm going to buy a pack of, you know, the cheapy kind of mixed vegetable pack that you can get in the freezer section. I'm going to have a go at dehydrating those. So I think things like that are quite good from the point of view of having, knowing that you've got some vegetables, they don't have to be fresh, do they? So frozen, canned, dehydrated, that's all fine, isn't it? And it was prime of midlife that um, was doing those dehydrating, those vegetables. So I'll try and remember to link her video below. Um, so what else has happened? I've still kind of traipsing my daughter to her hospital appointments but luckily I don't think there's going to be any more she's healing really really well so I don't think she'll have any more for a few months now um when I did my last video I was saying that my youngest daughter Izzy was really poorly suspected glandular fever we still don't have the definitive tests back yet she's got to go and see the doctor on Friday eldest daughter's had this operation middle daughter was okay but literally as I'd kind of published that video she went down with Covid so she's had Covid she's supposed to be coming this weekend we're really hoping that she'll be a well enough and be not testing positive still she's testing positive today and it's Wednesday so hopefully she will be okay we were planning to go over and see my parents which obviously we're not going to do but well, she won't come at all if she's still testing positive and um, she's feeling a bit better just um, nose streaming and feeling like she's got signs of a heavy cold so fingers crossed we'll see anyway it's all go with the children being poorly even adult children so anyway I won't talk any more now because I talked quite a lot during the video so I'll show you some of the first few days of this week and what we've been up to
today. Justin's on poo picking duty. I put my cardigan on and my coat on and now I'm a bit warm. Get to start walking. It's a bit muddy underfoot, but it's not too bad. We haven't brought Archie into the woods for ages, actually, but it's nice. It's nice to come in here because it's just the bird song and everything. It's so lovely, it's so relaxing. There's lots of people about, but they don't seem to be up this end of the woods, so that's good. You can hear lots of people and kids last day half term here in the UK, so they're making the most of the nice day before they have to go back to school tomorrow. Oh man and his dog. Dog's hanging on to your heels. Gorgeous wood this. It's obviously maintained. It looks like it's being pollarded, doesn't it? Do you think it's being pollarded? Yeah, These trees. So. Or coppiced, coppiced or whatever you call it. I know nothing about these things. But it's rather nice. And this is only five minutes from where we live, so it's just a really nice walk. You get straight into the woods, you're walking along the Estuary River, although there's a train line down there as well, so we don't go too close because of Archie. I don't want him too close to that. It's really nice. got a flask but I think unfortunately he's also got the A double L and Archie knows. Oh. That's an he's obsessed. Should we get the coffee out then? This is a nice view for our cup of coffee. Trust him. Yes, cheers. Cheers big ears. <laughs> hmm. I'll get the biggest one. Yeah, as always. <laughs> So just popped into Lidl early on Monday morning and this is when I always find a halfway decent Lidl box for £1.50. And today's looks quite good, especially as I'm giving up sugar. <laughs> I've really got to give up sugar. So I need sort of sweet things and there's plenty of fruit in here. So I picked this one up for my daughter because she's just had an operation. And I think one little ready meals aren't very nice, but one of the edible ones is the curry. Any any of the curries are okay, but 70p, I thought I'd get that for her since she's not really able to do much cooking. So what did I get in here? I've got a very small pepper. I got some onions and I they were on my list, onions. I don't use a lot of onions, but I like to keep some in in case other people are coming and they like onions. Um, a few potatoes. Potatoes were also on my list, but I do have a few already. Um, bananas, a lot of bananas here. So, more bananas than actually, they were there, including some squashed ones at the bottom, which we'll have to, oh my God, there's loads of bananas. It's a pear, now that doesn't look too good, does it? What I'll do with that pear is I won't waste it. I'll cut that piece off and I'll chop it up to put in my porridge, because I like a pear in my porridge. And there's more pears down there, hopefully that pear. Yeah, that pear looks better. And pears are really good at the moment, I find. This is a really good time of year. A ton of bananas. I didn't know they were down there. There's a lot of bananas down there. I've got this honey pomelo, which I've never tried. I've never had one of these. I look at them and I think, I don't know what they are and they're expensive, so I don't bother buying. And a watermelon. Now, they are very expensive. So that's good. And an ordinary melon. There's a honeydew melon in there as well. So I think you can just about see what's there. What I'll do with the bananas that are too mushy to do anything with is I will put those in the freezer and I've got a couple in there already. So actually I might make a banana loaf with the ones, with just these ones actually. I'll, I'll put some more in the freezer. I'm gonna make, because I am adjusting my diet at the moment to try and sort my thyroid out, I'll talk about that in the intro I expect. Um, I might, might make a gluten-free banana loaf and actually not use any sugar in it, which sounds weird, it could be weird. I think if I use coconut, and maybe a bit of stevia. I've got some pure stevia. I can probably make it sweet enough for me to want to eat it. Justin, no doubt, will be not impressed by that. <laughs> so anyway, I don't think that's too bad for £1.50. I expect I will show you the rest when I get home, but I'm off to the dentist. 
This now look a crazy mess because I've been up since silly o'clock trying to avoid the traffic. Think about where we are now because we're in a village outside the main town now. And uh, coming in at rush hour, you really hit the traffic. There's just a, a real spot where everything just has to squeeze into one little roundabout and it always causes a problem. So I left quite early because I had a dentist appointment at 9.30. It's 9.15 now and I've just arrived at the dentist. So I thought I'd quickly say this, what I'm doing. Um, just, just for a checkup, nothing major. Um, so I thought well, I'd come in early, go to Lidl first. So I get there for eight o'clock, which I did. I got there for about 10 to eight did my shopping got a little box which I have filmed just now so I'll show you that um, and then I had to go to just pop in the car I had a bit of extra time anyway and I knew that there was a loo in the co-op and I needed the loo so I went to this is a big co-op went to the co-op and I thought have a look at their gluten-free bread options I know they normally are quite good for free from stuff although quite expensive I wouldn't probably ideally go to the co-op I didn't have time to go to Tesco's or Sainsbury's or anything else like that before the dentist and I've got to go for a blood test after the dentist because um I've mentioned in previous videos that I've got hyperthyroidism I was diagnosed about a year ago and the consultant was put me on medication was really quite happy with how it was going and did think I'd be one of those cases where it just kind of went into remission naturally and I was quite hopeful of that however it's just inexplicably gone high again so it doesn't look like I am going to be one of those people and the options they give you for treatment are to remove a part of your thyroid which is obviously drastic or to zap it with some radioactive stuff which can then make you go hypo which gives you a low low functioning th thyroid nearly all the time from what i can see so you're just replacing one thing where you have to take medication forever for another thing where you have to take medication forever i don't know if they think it's slightly better to be have a low functioning thyroid than a high one. I'm really not sure. I need to discuss it more with the, the consultant. I had a telephone conversation with her and she said, um, go and get another blood test. Let's just see what the next one looks like. So over the weekend, I've been doing a bit more research. I did look before about, you know, lowering your inflammation in your body and trying to treat your thyroid naturally through food and lifestyle. And now I think, well, I need to be a bit more determined about it rather than being a bit half-hearted, which is what I tend to do. I, I start off and I think, well, okay, I'll, I'll cut out gluten and I'll cut out sugar and I'll cut out alcohol and I cut down on those things, but I don't cut them out and I'm not kind of determined enough. And I think also the cost of gluten-free can be a bit prohibitive unless you make everything yourself. And in my last video, I already said that I'd been so sh short of time, you know, so the idea of making one way of gluten-free bread from scratch or even finding a recipe that tasted nice because I have attempted it before and it was horrible and you know just doing everything from scratch trying to substitute trying to find snacks and things that I can eat that don't contain sugar and aren't quite processed because I am a bit of a snacker and that's a bit of a problem but you've got to accept that where you are aren't you otherwise if I don't have something ready then I'll end up eating something inappropriate and also dairy-free well I you know I've never I know lactose is a problem for me, so I just found lactose, lacto-free milk a while back and thought, well, hey, especially when I started doing it in Aldi and Lidl and thought, brilliant, OK, I could do it. And I have been able to do it. But when I was doing a bit of research, they, uh, one doctor said that casein in milk can be a problem as well. So you're better off at least trying dairy-free for a while. So I'm going to start trying to do some dairy-free. So I had a look at the dairy-free options in um, Lidl and I have to avoid soya so I don't want to just replace you know one thing that's a problem with another thing that's a problem because soya gives has I have an intolerance to soya as well but I did find some hard cheese um, and I did find I was quite pleased to find some coconut yogurts that I they were fruit flavored and I thought they'll be full of sugar had no sugar in them so that was good but they didn't hardly have anything, any other options in the co-op for dairy-free, which I was surprised at. Um, I did get some gluten-free rolls and some crackers and things in there. So that's where I am. I'm going to attempt then to be a bit more aggressive about doing what, I'm, what is suggested that you do if you've got a thyroid that doesn't function well. And also I know it will 
likely be good because it's anti-inflammatory generally for the arthritis that seems to be spring up and I've got it very badly my hands have got quite painful hands at the moment so that's the plan the plan is no sugar no gluten no dairy no fun no alcohol um what else no alcohol I think that's it no sugar no dairy no gluten no alcohol no caffeine now caffeine I've had caffeine today um, I do only have two cups of something with caffeine in it anyway, but I think I will go back to replacing my morning coffee with a turmeric latte wherever I can or have decaf. Um, I'm going to keep the first cup of the tea, first cup of tea of the day, caffeine at the moment because I, I think it's the, I think I'm all right with a bit of caffeine. It's the kind of the, the fact that it's quite stimulating and your body's already overstimulated. Um, I still don't really know. I need to do a lot more research, but it's all a bit annoying. I just wonder how I'm going to manage when I go on holiday and that kind of thing. But yeah, I need to just have a go because I don't want to have to have my thyroid zapped. So I think I need to do something quite dramatic here and see if I can get it in remission by myself. So I'm going to have a go. I'm quite motivated now. Anyway, I'll show you when I get home what I got. I've got to go for the blood test first after my checkup and pop in to see number one daughter who's had still post-op and can't do very much. Just pop in and see her and then we'll go from there. Okay, so here's the rest of my little haul. I already have shown you the box. I got the £1.50 box. That was quite good, I thought. But really, this cost me £56.29 pence, and you don't get a lot for your money now, do you? Um, I think things have gone up a lot. So anyway, let's go through them quickly. Let's start with the fresh produce. I've got a large broccoli um, that was 95 pence. I remember when these were like 50p, but then again, probably that was too cheap for the farmers. Um, mushrooms, I've got these nice big field mushrooms. This is a cheapy family pack, 155. Carrots are only 50p. Sweet potatoes are 99p, which I think is quite good. And I find that Lidl and Aldi are a good place to buy cat litter, although I prefer the wood pellet one. This is cheaper and I don't have to go out of my way specially to get a wood pellet one. £2.19 for that. Uh, Justin wanted shreddies, I couldn't find shreddies, so I got him fruit and fibre for one twenty nine. I nearly shoplifted this, I <laughs> didn't mean to, Two twenty nine because um, I stuck it underneath my small trolley and then I just went through and the woman said to me, um, did we put the loo roll through? And I felt like a criminal. I felt really bad. <laughs> I said, oh God, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Um, I bought just oat milk this time because obviously I'm staying off the dairy. Um, so I got oat milk, no dairy milk. That's one twenty nine. A cheaper version was this coconut and rice, organic unsweetened milk. I thought I'd give that a try. It might be nice for porridge. Um, sometimes I find coconut just kind of becomes a bit over the overwhelming flavour. So I don't always like it in things, but... Um, it's okay occasionally that was 95p and I was really pleased to find these because um, really I wanted like a big pot of coconut yogurt but I thought these are going to be sweetened and then when I looked if you look at the ingredients there's actually no sugar it's cranberry juice from concentrate natural cranberry flavoring there's some weird broad bean protein oh gosh um apple ex extract so they're naturally naturally sweet that is a raspberry and cranberry one this is the peach and passion fruit one which has what does that have in it apple again some passion fruit juice from concentrate so i mean they're, they're obviously they're quite processed but they they could be worse and they've got no sugar in them which is ideal for me at the moment i did have two boxes of eggs but i gave one to justin's mum because it's pancakes day tomorrow and she forgot to get any um 119 each and i bought some more. i've got some of this in the fridge anyway but it's nearly finished i don't like it not on you know i don't like it also bread i'm not having bread but i prefer actual proper butter and i do have some butter which obviously we're gonna to have to finish up but um i'll buy it because i'm trying to go dairy free these were reduced i just wanted to plain salmon but um these were reduced and salmon is so expensive so they started life as 3.99 and this one's 2.79 oh they're both 2.79 so one for the freezer well probably both for the freezer actually unless i eat them to, unless we eat them tonight i'm not sure um what else have i got so chicken for archie it's 279 although it's not going up a lot i think it's getting lighter 
No, it's still a kilogram. It's still a kilogram, actually. So no, no, that's not a lie. It's not gone up that much at all, that chicken. I did splash out on a corn-fed chicken, though, for us. Um, when I looked at the price, I didn't realise it was £7.11, actually. I think I saw the price per kilogram and thought, oh, that looks OK, and grabbed it. It's actually quite a small chicken, but... We keep saying we're going to keep eating meat. And obviously I am going to keep eating meat because I'm restricting my diet so much in other ways at the moment. Um, then we should buy better meat. So this is a corn fed free range chicken and costs £7.11, which is quite a lot, but it's a bit of a treat. Um, I've got some more rice cakes. I have those sometimes instead of bread. Some nor vegetable stock. And I got that because I knew it was gluten free. Free. I didn't really like buying these plastic toothbrushes, but I don't know when I'm going to get out to get any bamboo ones. One pound forty-nine for three seedless raisins. One pounds nineteen. That's not bad, is it? Two lots of paracetamol. Thirty-seven pence each. These need to go in the freezer. Blackberries. I use those mixed with other berries for my porridge in the morning. I'm still eating porridge, and I shall be making it with non-dairy milk in future. They actually cost. I didn't write it on because they're a bit wet. What did that cost? Frozen back. They cost two twenty-five. I really wanted raspberries, but they didn't have any. So they, they had lots with um, a lot of black currants in them. And I've really got those. And I find them a bit sharp. So I think I've done it. Oh, I've got this cheddar. Vimondo vegan cheddar. Now this, again, it's quite processed. It's not got soy in it, whether it's a good thing. But I don't know. I'm going to give it a go. I, I don't really hold out great hopes for it being delicious. You can tell me if you use it and how you use it. I doubt it melts on things, but well, I've got I've got some. If I'm going to go dairy free, I'm going to go properly dairy free this time. So I think I have done everything. So fifty six pounds twenty nine. Remember, I've got the big box, the one pound fifty box, which is packed full of fruit. It's got potatoes and onions and a lot of bananas in it. So I gave Justin's mum some bananas as well. So yes, that's it. That's my shopping for this week. So I forgot to show you my co-op shop, a small shop that I did as well, where I just got some gluten-free stuff. Um, and I spent £8.83 in the co-op. Um, I got some of these Shah brown ciabatta rolls, gluten-free rolls um, with buckwheat and salad. I mean, I know these ones are, don't taste that bad <laughs> compared to some of the others. Um, and I got crisp breads because sometimes I just don't like the bread. Um, oh, I should tell you how much they were. So the the rolls were, the crisp breads were £1.80 and the rolls were £2.65. So that's quite expensive, isn't it? And I got more salmon because I'm just finding reduced salmon today. And I, lo I like salmon, but I find it reduced. I'll stick it in the freezer. So I've got two pieces there for £2.88. It's still quite expensive, isn't it? I've got a feeling I made a mistake with this. It's Shrove Tuesday tomorrow, pancake day. And I thought, I'll oh, just give myself a break and let's have some pancake batter mix that's gluten free. Um, that cost £1.50. I've got a horrible feeling it's got sugar in it. Oh, it hasn't. Oh, it hasn't. I thought it was already sweetened. So, no, but look at the stuff they have in them. <laughs> anyway, I can give that a go and actually then have some pancakes for Shrove Tuesday. I think it's time to get up, Arch. You're comfy enough, aren't you? You're comfy enough, aren't you? I think it's time. Your legs are Kimbo, Jimbo. You're a naughty boy sleeping on the bed, aren't you? So the electric kettle broke and we had this as a backup. So I thought I'd just start using it. I actually really like it. And the reason I didn't use it when I first found it, which was second hand, I think it was at a boot sale, um, was that the girls said it made the tea bubbly. And it, it kind of does, but you have to just let it settle for a minute or so before you use it. I found that that, that does it. And I really like the way that it whistles, which I think it's just about to do. Here we go. <laughs> so you you know when the kettle's ready. Coffee time. Doing it with half milk, half water, and it's oat milk this time. Look what I'm doing. 
I got these little this little coffee thing from the charity shop. Um, I got tea, coffee, and sugar, and they've got little wooden tops which I need to varnish. Um, <coughs> for three pounds fifty, I was looking for some new ones, so I was pleased with those. So I'm rescuing the pear that was a bit disgusting in my in my little waste too good to waste box and um, i'm not using it all actually in my porridge because it's actually a bit hard but it'll be all right cooked so i've saved some of it and i'm making it with my coconut and rice milk which i've not tried before um i'd make it with just one cup of milk whatever however i make it and the rest is water anyway so i'll give that a go and see how that turns out Looks okay. It needs something else though. I think for a bit of sweetness. A few raisins. So I've got to take daughter number one back to the hospital for a checkup and I've got about an hour to run around and do a bit of tidying up. So I'm going to do that now. So I said in my video the other day, when I was talking about keeping your life simple and saving time and that kind of thing, that I don't really iron anything. It's hardly anything now that I iron. And I know, you know, obviously if you go out and you have to wear a business suit and shirts and that kind of thing, you probably do need to iron your shirts, but I no longer have to do that. But even when I did go to work in an office, I tried to avoid anything that required ironing. So I'm just folding things as kind of neatly as I can so that they don't really need ironing. Some of these are just slightly damp, so I'm going to put them in the airing cupboard, making a different pile for those. Sadly, I haven't got any sunshine today or I would have just finished them off outside. Anyway, there we go. Archie, why are you so excited? You bought me your monster. Right, we've tidied up a bit in here. I haven't had time to mop the floors. I've done the washing up and tidied up and cleaned and everything is done except the floors. So that's good. Now I'm going to go and take Becky to the hospital appointment. So for the rest of this week, I've got my usual two cleaning jobs. Um, but my daughter does just the odd one on a Saturday and because she can't do it because if she's post-op I'm going to cover hers on this Saturday so that's another thing to do um, before my other daughter arrives and um, what else is going on oh I, did, I forgot to say I never got my blood test because I went to I turned up at the hospital and the queue I, I got there about probably 10 o'clock and the first available appointment for walk-ins was three o'clock 3.30 so my consultant didn't tell me that she didn't tell me that i you know it's best to make an appointment beforehand otherwise i would have so i made an appointment but it's for this friday now so i still haven't had my blood test but we'll get that sorted out any of this this week and i've decided to go and splash out on an actual hairdresser rather than going to the college because it's really straggly needs a haircut and the reading i've done around thyroid um hyperthyroidism graves disease which is what i've got um, says that it does it can really impact your hair and it tends to make it really dry and break and that explains so much why it's always, it always feels like so straw like and straggly and um, whatever I put on it so I think perhaps having a decent haircut I might get some layers put in and a bit taken off this time um, with an actual hairdresser I know I do go to the students they obviously student hairdressers but every now and then I'll go to an actual salon that I trust pay a bit more but get probably a better haircut and then the students can kind of follow the, the pattern of that when I go to them next time. So that will cost about £35, so a 
bit dearer than my eight pound student haircut. But as I say, just every now and then I like to have a proper haircut. So that's my plans for the rest of the week. So fingers crossed Chloe and her boyfriend Scott can actually make it down from London and come and see us at the weekend. If not, I think we're going to be digging our veggie patch up the garden. We'll see. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give me the thumbs up and do subscribe so you can see whenever I publish something new. I will see you next time. Bye for now.